Hi, this is Tony. And if you want to know everything there is to know about Chroma Scan, you've come to the right place. This complete video tutorial will tell you everything there is to know about all the powerful features of Chroma Scan. Now, over the past three years, we've added a lot of features to Chroma Scan. And over time, we've added a lot of videos to describe each one of these new features. And they've been scattered around our website. So this video brings them all into one place. So here's what we're going to cover during the training. First, we're going to cover everything related to getting started. Then we're going to scan some photos. Then we're going to cover some advanced techniques. Then we're going to talk about working with photos after the fact. Finally, we're going to talk about a feature called import, which allows you to bring in untagged images from your computer into Chroma Scan so that you can tag them using our voice recognition system. So before we get started with Chroma Scan, I want to talk a little bit about photo metadata and what it can do for you and why it's such an important part of the Chroma Scan experience. Historically, adding metadata has kind of been like filling out a spreadsheet where you type the information in field after field. Chroma Scan uses a new technique called natural language tagging where you describe your photos normally and our software detects important things like the people, places, and dates. We resolve this information and place the tags in the correct places so your photos can then be searched by date, location, or people. Then we embed your original description of the photo into the description tags so that whoever sees it can then see the story behind it. In this section, we're going to put together the Chroma Scan light box and show you how to set up the Chroma Scan slide box to set up slides and negatives. There are three different ways that you can use to power the Chroma Scan light box. The first is to use the included 9 volt adapter that came with the light box. Now, this is great if you're gone somewhere and you don't have access to a USB plug or a power outlet. The second way is to use a standard household DC adapter. Now, this didn't come with a Chroma Scan light box, but you can buy them on Amazon for less than $10. As long as it says it's 12 volt and it has a standard DC tip, it should work. Finally, the most versatile way to power the light box is to use the Chroma Scan USB adapter, which will allow you to use any USB outlet as a power source for the light box. You can use a variety of different USB outlets to power the light box, including your iPhone charger, a port on your computer, or my favorite, which is a rechargeable USB power bank. Okay, let's put together the Chroma Scan light box. I take it out of the box and I like to rotate it so that the spine is on my left so I can set the brace arm easier, which I grab and guide right into the slot. Next, I guide the top flap down into position. When I'm done, everything should be lined up and should look like this. I'm going to use the Chroma Scan USB adapter and a battery pack to power the lights. You can pick these up on Amazon for about $10, and this one has a built-in solar panel and two USB ports. I'm going to use the second USB port to charge my iPhone so it will slow down the drain on my battery as I use the camera. Next, I'll slide my iPhone right along this edge created by the tab until it reaches the foam pad and make sure that the phone is firmly in the corner. One thing I should mention is to turn off any strong overhead or side lights. Chroma Scan works best when it supplies the light. Now, if you're in a place where you can't control the lighting, here's a tip. Use the light box cover to seal off the left side of the light box. This is the side that's most sensitive to light bleed, and this is an effective way to minimize it. Finally, if you have a slide box for slides and negatives, let's take a look at how to set it up. I like to keep my USB adapter inside it so I never lose it. I'm going to use the same USB battery pack to power it. Next, I recommend taking two slides and placing them down near the retaining wall of the slide box. This will compensate for the 1 8 inch thickness of the base of the device and will keep your phone level while you're scanning. The Chroma Scan app uses the orientation of your iPhone to determine if it's scanning photos or slides. When you slip it into the slide box, it should automatically orient to the scan view for slides and negatives. However, if you've turned on your rotation lock on your iPhone, you'll need to turn it off or we won't be able to properly detect which scanning mode you're in. Once you have it set up like this, you should be able to put slides into the illuminated backplane and see them on your phone. It should line up correctly, but if it doesn't, you can drag the crop box around until it's perfectly aligned. Now that we have the devices set up, we need to do a couple things to get the app set up before we can start scanning. Now, when you start the app for the first time, there may seem like a barrage of alerts and permission requests, and I want to go over each one so you know what they do. The first alert you're likely to see is for notifications. If you grant permissions for Chroma Scan to send you notifications, then we will alert you whenever there's a new major version, and we don't use this alert system for any other purpose. Also, the first time you launch an app after we've released a new version, you're likely to see these walkthrough slides that tell you about the new changes. 
If later you'd like to see these slides again, go to the documentation settings and then tap on the What's New link. Next, Chroma Scan will ask you for permission to access your contacts. We use this to be able to recognize your contact names during voice recognition. So if you have friends and family members in your photos, you can use those names in your descriptions and they'll be accurately recognized. I should mention that we never transmit your contacts to our server or anywhere else. They are strictly used on the device for recognition. The next little bit of setup is the choice between local storage or iCloud. And I would highly, highly recommend choosing iCloud. This option allows you to see your photos almost immediately on your Mac or PC and lets you configure important settings on your computer. If you prefer using Dropbox instead, I'll go over that in a moment. If you choose local, however, your photos will be available only on this device and you'll have to transfer them using a cable with iTunes file sharing, which is a slow and cumbersome process. Next, you'll be asked if you want to use Chroma Scan with Siri. Choose this option and you'll be able to ask Siri to find photos that you've tagged with Chroma Scan. So that's the first wave of settings. After you start scanning, you're going to be asked to grant permission to be able to use the camera and the microphone and the speech recognition engine. For now, let's go into the app settings. Our first order of business is to set the language preferences. Now, if you speak a language other than English, select that from one of the available options, and this will allow recognition in that language. Next, we're going to tap on Cloud Sync and confirm that iCloud is enabled. You can switch it off here or turn off Dropbox syncing. Only one Cloud Sync service can be turned on at a time. Well, that's the basic setup. In the next section, we're going to talk about the Relationship Manager. Chroma Scan version 3 features the ability to tag your photos using natural language, and part of this functionality is the ability to use natural and familial words like mom and dad in your descriptions and then tag their real full names to the image. The setting we use to handle this is called the Relationship Manager, and let's dive in and see how it works. So I'm back in my app settings, and I'll tap on the Relationship Manager to reveal this empty list view. Now, I can start adding relationships right here on my phone, but it's much faster and easier to do on my computer with CloudSync turned on. Now, I have iCloud enabled, but you can do this with Dropbox as well. I'll hop over to my Mac and tap on the iCloud Drive item here in the sidebar, and open my Chroma Scan folder. Inside this folder is another folder called Settings, and inside there is my Relationships file, which I will open with any standard text editor. Adding relationships is quite simple, as you'll see. And if you've not done this before, there's a little starter here to give you an idea of how we define relationships. I'm going to delete this and start fresh. Now, rather than peck this out right here, I am, like Julia Child, going to go over to the oven, so to speak, and paste in my own relationship sentences here so you can see how it works. Relationship sentences are just as easy as defining a familial noun, like mom, dad, uncle, or aunt, and then mapping it to a particular name. As soon as Chroma Scan detects that noun used in a description, we then add the full name to that image's metadata keywords. So, here at the top, I'm in a lot of my photos, so I'm mapping the nouns I and me to my name. You can map multiple nouns to the same name, as I've done here, and all you have to do is separate each noun with a comma. Then I add an equal sign and then follow that with a full name. When I'm done with that sentence, I just add a carriage return to go to the next line. There are times when you want to map plural nouns to more than one person, such as if you have a photo with both your grandparents or both your sisters. That's easy too. Just start with the plural noun as I've done with parents, then follow it with the equal sign, and then list the people one by one and make sure to use a comma to separate them. Don't put a comma after the last one, but do use a carriage return. There's one more use case that will come up, and that's when you have one relationship that might map to multiple people. For example, if you have multiple brothers or cousins or uncles. That's easy too. Just add each noun as normal as I've done with my uncles. When you run into a situation where you have a photo and you need to specify one particular uncle, just follow the word uncle with the first name of the uncle you want to use. For example, I would say something like, this is my uncle Joe and I at Vasona Park in the summer of 1988. In this case, we'll resolve the multiple uncles with Joe Williams. If you don't specify the first name, Chroma Scan will use the very first uncle on your list which in this case is Spartan Williams. There's a more extreme case down at the bottom where I have two sets of grandparents. 
if I want to use the second pair, I would say grandparents Audrey to add the full names of this, my second set of grandparents to my photos. If I had a photo with my first set, I would only need to say the word grandparents without a qualifier since they're listed first. So that's the basic structure of the relationship manager. Now you might notice that I have my dog listed here and that goes to demonstrate that we can map any noun to any name. So think outside the box if you need to. When I'm done, I just hit save to save the file and iCloud will send those changes back to my iPhone. After a minute or two, I should be able to tap on this relationship link and see the names I've added, just like this. Now, all the names are available for me to use in my photo descriptions. So that's it for the basic setup. Later, in the advanced section, we'll cover how to add custom names and places to Chroma Scan. Our next step is to talk about how the voice recognition system works and start scanning photos. In this section, we're going to talk a little bit about the voice recognition engines that are in Chroma Scan and how they can help you tag your photos. Now, since Chroma Scan version 3, we have two different voice recognition systems that we use to create photo metadata and to control the scanning workflow so you don't have to touch the screen all the time. One recognition system works very much like Siri and is used when you describe what's going on in your photos. We call this the online system because the voice recognition gets sent off to a server to get recognized and then returns back as a text description. This is the system that we use for natural language tagging where we automatically detect things like dates, locations, and people in your description and then create the appropriate metadata tags for you. The second system is called offline because it does all its work locally to your phone. We use this system for scanning commands and for tagging custom names and places. Now with the introduction of natural language tagging in version 3, the way we use these systems has changed, so let me explain to you how each works. When the online system is invoked, it will transcribe everything you say and create a description. During this description, if you say the name of somebody who's in your contact, we will recognize it accurately, along with the nouns or pronouns that you might say, such as mom or dad, that you defined in your relationship manager. The offline system is always active when you're in this scan screen, and you can tell that it's working through this voice control indicator. As it's recognizing things, it turns amber, and while it's detecting silence, it stays green. You can also use the offline system to create tags for people names that are not in your phone's contacts. By adding these names to a custom list inside Chroma Scan, we can learn how to pronounce those names and we'll be able to recognize them much more accurately than the online system. Once we start tagging images, you'll see how these two systems work together to help you embed important details into your photos. Now that we've gone through most of the one-time setup, let's start scanning. In this section, I'll show you how to use the scanning user interface and help you discover some of the scanning commands we can use. I'm going to tap on the scan button to get into scan mode and instantly I get this interface. Now it might look a little imposing, so let me go over each element to show you what it does. This little X is how you get out of scanning mode and go back to the gallery. This red button is used to capture the image that's in the crop area. And later on in another section of this video, I'll show you a voice command so you can do this without having to touch the screen. This area here is a three-stage button that controls the types of images that Chroma Scan can capture. Chroma Scan has the ability to capture either TIFF or JPEG images or both simultaneously. Tap on this button to cycle through each output. When the area is all gray, it will capture just JPEG images. This button is called the Voice Control Indicator and it has two important purposes. This indicator is used by the offline recognition engine, which handles scan commands, custom names, and custom places. When the indicator is green like this, it means it's detecting silence. If it's amber, that means it's detecting speech or noise. If you're not giving a command and the indicator is amber, it might mean that there's a lot of background noise and you should wait until it goes back to green to start using the voice recognition. As you speak, it should turn amber and then go back to green as the recognition gets registered. The second important purpose for this button is that a single tap starts the online recognition engine that we use for natural language tagging. Once it's engaged, the offline engine gets paused and a new recognition window appears where you can describe your photo. After you give your description, we detect the pause and automatically close that online recognition window and we go back to offline mode. 
One last thing about this button. If you're in a very noisy environment, you can use this button to pause the local recognition so you don't get any false recognition. Just long press on it for one second or more and you'll get a little alert tone and it will change to red. To resume local recognition, just long press on it again and it'll turn back to green. Below this button is another double duty button. As you start scanning, you'll see a little thumbnail of the last image you captured. This is a great confirmation in case you lose track of where you are. If you tap on it, it will pause the camera view. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, having the camera wide open can drain the battery fairly quickly. But if you find yourself shuffling through some photos before you actually scan an image, you can pause the camera view until you're ready, and this will help you conserve your battery power. When you're ready to resume, just tap on this button again. Down in the low right corner is the map view, and when we detect a location based on your description, we'll scroll right to that location to give you a little confirmation of where we're going to tag the image. This little area in the red box is called the crop box, and it sets the area that will be captured when you scan. ChromaScan has pre-built the most popular print sizes into the application, and you can access them by tapping on this box. As you tap, You'll see the print sizes with this label, and it will cycle to larger sizes until it returns back to the smaller ones. If you have a thick case on your iPhone and the crop box doesn't line up exactly with your photo, you can use your finger to drag the box around until it's perfect. If you have a custom print size that doesn't match our pre-built sizes, there's a way to get a perfect crop. Just tap away until you get a crop template that is the closest size to the photo and then use your fingers to pinch and zoom to make the crop box larger. Now there's a couple tips that I can share with you. If you pinch or zoom horizontally, just the width of the box will grow or shrink. If you pinch or zoom just vertically, only the height will grow or shrink. Finally, if you pinch and zoom diagonally, both the height and the width of the crop box will grow and shrink proportionally. The very last little part of the user interface is the metadata box. This is where we display the metadata that we generate through natural language tagging. This box has three different zones and there are different tap or swipe gestures that can be used to clear metadata items in this field. Let's take a look at each one. The description zone is a transcript of what we captured during online recognition. We use this to generate other metadata fields like the date, location, and people. Normally, this description gets embedded into the description metadata of your photo, but if you swipe right in this zone, the text will turn red and the description won't be embedded in your photo. We'll still embed whatever metadata that we derive from the description. Swiping right again returns it back to normal operation. A single tap in this field will reopen the voice recognition engine and allow you to add more text to your description. We won't parse that text for additional dates, locations, and people, but this is a great way to add more information to the photo. Finally, swiping from right to left in this zone will clear all the metadata from every field in the metadata boxes. The people zone is where we place the names of people we've detected through natural language tagging or through the local offline recognition engine. If you single tap on this field, it will remove the last detected name one by one, starting from the right. A long tap of one second or longer will clear all the names at once, but will keep all of the other metadata fields intact. Finally, the date and location field contains information we detected from natural language tagging, or if you declared a custom location preset. A single tap in this field will clear both the date and location, but will leave other metadata fields intact. So that's a look at touch gestures for the scan screen. There's a handy reference to everything I've covered inside the user guide. In the next section, I'll show you how to use many of these features through voice control. There are a number of voice commands you can use when scanning that will help reduce the amount of times you have to touch the screen. These voice commands are optional, but I think once you start using them, they'll be quite useful. Now these commands are available in offline mode, which is in this screen. Make sure that when you give these commands, the voice control indicator is green instead of amber, or you might get a false recognition. Now let's take a look at the commands. You can say the word chroma to initiate the online voice recognition mode that we use for natural language tagging instead of tapping on the voice control indicator. You can use the word capture instead of tapping on the red button to scan the image that's in the crop box. 
If you have photos that have writing on the back that you want to preserve, flip the photo over after you scan the front, slide it into the light box, and then say the word back scan. This will capture the back of the image, and then you could flip the images back and forth while you're in the gallery. Say the words clear all, and all the metadata will be cleared, and this is the equivalent of swiping left in the description field. Say the words clear people, and all the people names will be cleared, which is the equivalent of long pressing on the people field. Now you might want to jump to a particular scan template instead of having to cycle through all of them by tapping on the crop box. You can simply say template followed by the template number you want to use. And you can find these template numbers in the settings section. So if I want to jump to a four by six template, I would just say template four. Now while we're here, if you ever want to set a template as your default size, simply swipe the template over to the left and then tap on the default button. And then whenever you're in scan mode, that template will be used first. If you're in a template and you want to make it slightly bigger or slightly smaller, you can say the words template smaller or template bigger, and that will grow or shrink the crop box proportionately by 5%. And this is great if the crop box needs just a small adjustment to make it look exactly right. So those are the voice commands, and I think they'll save you a lot of time. Next, we're going to start scanning photos and using natural language tagging. So let's start scanning and tagging some photos using natural language tagging. First, let's recap what we've done to get to this point. We've set up the app and added some people to our relationship manager. During this scanning session, I'm going to use some custom names that exist outside my contacts and relationship manager, along with a pre-stored custom location. I'll show you how this works in the advanced techniques section. So I'm going to scan about four of these images. And for each image, I'll uncover a new feature that will help you get the most out of Chroma Scan. I'm going to start by tapping on the scan button. And I'll see this view with the crop preset set for four by six images. I'm going to slide my photo in so that the top left hand corner meets the top left corner of the crop box. Now I know this image is three and a half by five inches, which is a very common size for when my parents were taking photos. Since I know this size, I'm just going to say template three to jump to just that crop box preset. And don't worry if there's a little green showing around the edges because we eliminate this when we take the shot. Next, I'm going to say the word chroma to go into the online mode so I can give a description and start tagging my photo. My scan window then gets blurred and the recognition window pops open and I'll get two indicators that chroma scan is ready to listen to me. First, I should hear a two-stage audible tone. And second, the spinning wheel should disappear. At this point, the online recognition system is listening to you. Before we start with the description, let me share a few tips I've learned. First, make sure you have in mind exactly what you're going to say before you tap on that button or say chroma. You won't believe how nervous you get when you're on air, so to speak. I usually think of a description that includes a date, a location, and the people that are in the photo. Now, the date doesn't have to be exact. You can give just a year or a month in a year or the season in a year or the full date if you know it. And usually we can figure it out. The voice recognition is smart enough to recognize some punctuations that you can use to break up your description. Lastly, try to speak clearly and enunciate. Now, you don't have to go overboard on this, but voice recognition engines mostly fail on smaller words. So speaking clearly at a normal rate can significantly increase your accuracy. Now let's go back and give it a try. Now I'm giving a description of what's going on in the photo, and I want you to pay attention to a couple things. First, I'm describing my father and I, and the relationship manager will later figure out and fill out our full names. The other two names are in my contacts, so the voice recognition engine should be able to accurately figure them out. The recognition engine is also pretty good at recognizing well-known places like the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk, so it gets added correctly. And later, our location services are going to geotag this photo to its exact spot and import information like the address, the city, the state, the country, and even the GPS coordinates and embed them to the metadata. Finally, I don't know the exact date that this picture was taken, but judging by my height, I'm guessing it was the summer of 1974, and ChromaScan should be able to accept this date. After I'm done with my description, ChromaScan will detect the pause in my voice and automatically disengage the online system and go back into offline mode. I'll see the metadata get filled in, and the map should zoom to the precise location. All I have to do now is say the word capture, and ChromaScan will capture everything in the crop box and embed all this metadata into the image. 
Next, I'll slide in a four by six image of my daughters. Now I know this is a four by six print, so I'm gonna say template four to switch to the right crop box. Now I'll give a general natural description. Based on what I said, Chromascan used the relationship manager to tag both of the names of my girls because it detected the words daughters. And I've associated these names with my daughters. It got the general date, and because I generically said San Jose, it geolocated this image to the center of the city of San Jose. Now that's great if you don't know the precise location of something, but in this case I do, and I want to show you how to use pre-stored locations. I'll get into how to do this in the advanced section, but basically pre-stored locations are places or addresses that you might have a lot of photos in, and you can call them up exactly just by using offline recognition mode and a preset number. I can use it just the way I would use other scanning commands. I say the word location followed by a location number. Now if you swipe up from the bottom of the metadata box, this window appears and it shows you all of your custom names and your custom locations. This list shows me the location number of my stored location and the one I want to use, which is the only one here, is location one. I can tap to dismiss this window and then I will say location one to assign this precise location to this photo and I should see the map move to that place. That looks good. Then I'll say the word capture to record this image with this metadata. The next photo we're going to scan isn't a photo at all. It's a birthday postcard from my wife's great aunt Letty, and it has a lot of historical family value. It has two sides and ChromaScan has the unique ability to scan both sides of this image. Let's see how this is done. Since this is a custom sized card, I'm going to place it in the four x six template. And then I'm gonna use my fingers to pinch horizontally and vertically to size this crop box just right. Then I'll add a description the way I normally would. When I'm done, I'll say capture as before. I'm gonna take the postcard out, flip it over, and then place it back in the crop box. Now, instead of saying the word capture, I'm gonna say back scan to capture this image. What that does is it will capture the backside of this image as a separate file, but in the gallery, I'll be able to flip back and forth between each side. It's really cool and we'll take a look at it in a moment. The last image I'm gonna scan is very much like the others with one difference. I'll describe it and get the metadata recognized, but the gentleman in the photo isn't in my relationship manager or in my contacts. I've added him to my custom names. So after online recognition is done, I'm just gonna say his first and last name, just as I would with a scanning command, and it gets recognized after giving me an acceptance tone, and then I'll see it right here in the people metadata. It's just that easy. Now that we've scanned a few photos, let's take a look at them. They're shown in the gallery in chronological order, so my postcard from 1911 is here first. And this dog-eared icon tells me that there's a backside image. I can tap on it, and then tap on this icon down in the lower toolbar to flip it over. I can swipe right to see my other images, and if I want to see the location of any image, I can swipe up in this lower toolbar to reveal this map. There it is centered right on Greystone Park, so years from now the girls will remember where their favorite park was located. Since I'm connected to iCloud, I can pop over to my Mac's iCloud Drive folder and open up the Images folder in the ChromaScan directory and see these full resolution images. Both Mac and Windows PCs will automatically catalog the metadata that ChromaScan created, so if I search for something like Greensboro, I'll be able to instantly find the image that I just scanned that has that tag. And there it is. So that covers the basics of scanning with ChromaScan. In the next section, we'll cover some of the more advanced features that will help you get the most out of this product. So I hope by now you've gotten a general idea of how ChromaScan works. In this next section, we're gonna cover some advanced techniques that will help your workflow along. Specifically, we're gonna talk about how to add custom names and places to ChromaScan so that you can tag your photos a little quicker. We're gonna talk about importing a family tree, and then we're going to also cover how to edit and batch edit metadata. So if you need to fill in some metadata after you scanned it, you can do it inside the application. We're gonna talk about how to get your photos off of your iPhone if you're not using cloud sharing. And finally, we're gonna talk about a feature called playlists. So by this point, you should know that you can tag people names in your photos by using the relationship manager or by saying the names of the people in your description if they also happen to be in your phone's contacts. So what do you do about people's names that aren't in these places? Well, that's where custom names comes in. It's an easy way to feed the names of the people you know into the offline voice recognition engine so that you can use them later for tagging in your photos. 
Let's see how it's done. You get to custom names through the settings panel. Now tapping on this plus symbol allows you to add names to your voice recognition vocabulary one at a time, but there's a much faster way of doing it. This item called names.txt is a text file that holds groups of your custom names. If you don't have a CloudSync provider turned on, you can edit this file in app just by sliding it over to the left and then tapping on the edit button. From here, you can type in name after name and you just have to separate each one with a carriage return. Now I find this easier than adding a single name, but there's an even faster way to do this if you have CloudSync turned on. So I'm just gonna hit cancel here. Now if you do have iCloud or Dropbox turned on, go to the Chroma Scan folder and open the settings folder, and then open the names.txt file with a standard text editor. From here, you can type or paste in groups of names to your local vocabulary. Just make sure that you add a carriage return after each name, but don't add one to the very last name. When you're done, just save it and the changes go back to ChromaScan instantly and then you can see these new additions by tapping on the names.txt file. This means that these names have been added to your local vocabulary and you can use them for offline voice recognition so you can tag those people names in your photos. Now let's see how this works. To add the names of people to people metadata, you just say their names one by one just like you're giving a scanning command. Just make sure that the voice control indicator is green and then say the full name and then wait for the acceptance tone before you give another one. Let's try out a few just to see how it works. Vincenzo Lennox. Helga Bounds. Clemmy Earnshaw. Clear People. Columbus Waldrop. Francis Schroeder. Eriberto Frisk, Clear People, Chiquita Nice, Barry Goldschmidt, Leslie Sedano. As you can see, ChromaScan's local recognition is effective against even hard to pronounce names, but what if you get a really pesky one that refuses to be recognized? Well, luckily there's a built-in aliasing system that allows you to map an easy to recognize English word for a harder to recognize name. Let's see how this works. I'm first gonna navigate to my custom names panel and then tap on the names.txt file where I should see a list of my names. I'm gonna scroll down to a particularly hard name to pronounce. Now I had to search the internet for hard to pronounce names and I ended up with this Polish soccer player. Now there's a chance that the regular voice recognition engine might recognize this name correctly, but it would be much easier to substitute out an easy to recognize English word instead. So to do this, I'm just gonna slide the name over to the left and then tap on the edit button. From here, I'm going to add the word goalie into this name as a substitution and then hit save. And then notice how the name turned amber in color. And that's an indication that I've placed a substitution there. Now back in scan mode, instead of saying that goalie's full name, I could just say the word goalie. Goalie. And Chroma Scan recognizes it and substitutes the full name. It's just as easy as that. Geotagging your photos with accurate location metadata serves two important purposes. First, once you embed this information into your photos, you can search across your entire photo library based on city name or street or place. You get the idea. The other great reason is that whoever gets this image will know exactly where it was taken. Now, ChromaScan's online voice recognition engine is pretty good at turning location information that you give in your description into geolocation data that gets embedded into your photos. There are times, however, where you might have lots of photos taken in like, for example, a childhood home or a school or an aunt's house, and it might be a bit long in the tooth to say the full address every time you want to tag that photo. Fortunately, ChromaScan has a way of pre-storing exact locations that you can call up with just two words. Let's see how it works. Custom locations work similar to the relationship manager and custom names. Start by going to the settings folder in the ChromaScan directory in either iCloud or Dropbox and opening up the location.txt file with any plain text editor. From here, you can add a place name or an address, one per line, and then separate each with a carriage return. Now, here's a few tips that will help make sure that we get the location accurate. If it's a place name, try to add a city or state or a city or country to make sure we get the right one. 
You can add full addresses here as well. And if you ever want to double check if we're getting the right location, try copying that location and pasting it into either Google or Apple Maps. Now, if it gets right to the right point, we should find it as well. If not, try fine tuning the location by adding more data and then trying again. Once you're done, save the text file and the changes come back to Chroma Scan. Now, using custom locations is easy. You would just give your normal description and then after the description metadata gets recognized, use offline mode to say the word location followed by the preset number. Now, you can find all the preset numbers by swiping up from the metadata panel until you see this new panel. Each location has a preset number and this is the one you'll want to use after the location command. Location six. So there it is, that's custom places. It's an easy way to store and geotag your favorite locations. If you maintain a family tree, you can import these names into ChromaScan for use with our local voice recognition engine. Now I should mention upfront that this isn't a great solution if you have a huge family tree with hundreds or thousands of people and only a few of them are likely to be in photographs that you intend to scan. The better alternative in that case is to use the name.txt file with custom people. Now, on the other hand, if most of the people in your family tree are likely to be subjects to be tagged, then this is a great way to get them all into ChromaScan in one shot. To use this feature, your family tree software needs to produce an intermediary file called GEDCOM. Once you have that exported, email it to yourself to an account that you can collect on your iPhone running ChromaScan. Next, open that email message and then tap and hold onto the attachment until you see this dialog box open. Then scroll through the applications until you get to ChromaScan and then tap on it. ChromaScan should then launch and import your GEDCOM file just like this. You'll then see this list in the Custom Peoples panel, and if you ever need to delete it, you can just slide it over to the left and then tap the Delete button. And that's really it. Your family tree is now imported into ChromaScan, and then you can use these family members in local recognition mode. There are times when you're scanning where you don't necessarily have all the information you need, or maybe later you need to change some of the metadata in your photos. Well, that's easy to do for single images or in batch, and let's take a look at how you do it. I'm going to jump to a photo that I know has some metadata that I need to change. This photo is missing some metadata for one of the persons and it doesn't have a location that's precise enough because I just didn't know it at the time. Down here in the toolbar, I'll tap on this icon that looks like a tag and that will open up my tag editor. From here, I can modify or add information that I didn't get during the scanning phase. I can modify any of the fields to write new metadata back down to the image. So in this case, I'm going to add another person by separating the existing one with a comma and then typing in a new name. The next thing I want to do is update the location and I can do that by typing in any of these fields, but there's a much easier way to do it. And that's by tapping onto this map icon down at the bottom. And then a map will open up and center on the photo's current location. From here, I can pinch or zoom to get to a new location just like this. Then I can long press down on the desired location and a, and a pin will drop with this select label on it. Tapping onto this link will geotag the photo right to that spot and then fill in all the location metadata fields in just one clean shot. When I'm done updating the metadata, I can tap on the save button and then the new metadata will get written back out to the file. Now, if you captured both TIFF and JPEG images simultaneously, both images will get updated. While we're here, let's talk about the built-in location editor that you can get to from every image. If you swipe up from the metadata details, it will open up the same map view, and then you can update the location just like you did in the edit metadata window. This is great if you just need to update the location information and not any of the other fields. Editing an image at a time is easy, but what if you have a whole bunch of them that you want to make changes to? Well, we have a batch mode just for this purpose. So back in the gallery, tap and hold down on the edit tags button for at least one second. Then you should hear a click and then you should see this batch selection interface. Each image will have a selection circle in the lower right hand corner of the thumbnail and you can tap on each image to select it as part of the batch. If you ever want to leave this mode by the way you can just tap and hold down on the edit tags button again to return to the gallery but for now I need to select a few images so I'm going to go back into the edit mode and then I'm going to tap on a few images and you'll notice that the circle starts turning red and then the status bar above it updates. Once I've made my selection, I then tap on this edit button in the top right hand corner to enter into the edit metadata panel. Now it's gonna look a lot like single edit mode with a couple of exceptions. First of all, you'll see this red label indicating how many images you're about 
to modify in the batch. Also, the metadata fields should appear blank and ready for you to modify. You can tap on the map icon to open the location editor and make the changes to the location fields and they'll apply to all the photos in the batch. Any changes you make into these other fields will overwrite your existing fields with one exception. We never overwrite the people metadata in this mode. And the reason for that is because you can safely add names to existing photos. If you're missing some names, you can add them without losing the existing ones. Now, once you're done, tap on the save button and we will write those changes out to all of the images in the batch. So that's it. That's how you edit metadata in one or more images after you've scanned them. If you're not using either iCloud or Dropbox to automatically move images to your Mac or PC, there's a way to do it using your iPhone cable and iTunes. This works the same on either Mac or Windows, so let's see how it's done. First, make sure to connect your iPhone to your computer using the USB cable, and then open iTunes. Click on this phone icon to reveal your iPhone, and then click on file sharing. From here, scroll down to your Chroma Scan icon. Your tagged images are located in the Images folder, which you can drag to your desktop to make a copy. When you open your images, you'll see the metadata embedded inside, and now these photos are searchable. So that's a quick video on how to get your images out of Chroma Scan if you're not using Cloud Sync. Once you've scanned a bunch of photos, playlists can help you use all that metadata to organize your photos into groups based on a combination of the date, the location, and the people metadata. Let's see how this works. Start by tapping on the playlist button and then tapping on the plus icon. From here, you'll see this interface, which allows you to refine down your search. Now, I just want to see photos of my sister and I together in the 70s, so I'll start by using this interface to pick the start and stop dates of the photos that I want to add to this group. So in my case, this is just the beginning and the end of the 70s decade. Next, I'll move over to the People tab and then find my sister's name down on this list and then slide her name over to reveal this button to select it. I'll then scroll down to my own name and then do the same thing. Now notice as I added the dates and the people names, the status indicator down below showed me what my search criteria was so that I'll know as I'm building it. I could have also added locations using the same approach by using this Locations tab here in the middle. When I'm done, I just tap Save to name the saved search, and then it gets added to my playlists. It will then show me that I have four images that I've scanned that match this criteria of my sister and I in the 70s. As I scan more images that match this search, they'll automatically get added without me having to do anything. As I tap on this playlist, I'll be taken to a special gallery view where I see just the images that match this playlist. Now I can do anything that I could normally do in the gallery, such as pulling up this location viewer or editing this metadata further. When I'm done viewing this subset of my images, I can tap the clear button to go back to the full gallery. So there it is. Playlists are a nice way to group images together based on the date, location, and people metadata. In this section, I'll talk about how to work with images after you've finished scanning and tagging them with Chroma Scan. First, I'll take a look at some of the in-app tools inside of Chrome Scan that can help you edit, manage, and share photos that you've scanned. Second, we'll talk about how to edit your images using a Cloud Sync provider and have those changes come back to Chrome Scan. So let's start by first taking a look at the built-in tools that are inside of Chrome Scan. So I've purposefully scanned a few images with some defects in them just so that we can clean them up using our built-in editing and file management tools. So here in the gallery, I just tap onto an image to get the detailed view, and then most of the tools are down here in this toolbar. Now we already know that tapping onto this tag icon opens the metadata editor, which can be used to add or correct metadata. Tapping onto this trash can icon can delete one image at a time, and later on we'll talk about when you are using CloudSync, how you can quickly delete several images at once. Next to the trash icon is the flip button, which allows you to see the backside of a backscanned image. Now this button is only active when there actually is an image with a backside to it. Finally, tapping onto this cloud icon will send this image to the import folder, where then you can re-tag it using natural language tagging. We'll talk about that in greater detail in the next section when we cover the import features. For now, let's focus on this photo, which has some huge issues. Now normally you might be tempted to delete this image and start over, but I've scanned this a little crooked using the wrong template size just so I can show you how to use the built-in editing tools, which you can access by tapping onto this pen icon. Now our built-in photo editor isn't exactly Photoshop, but it can allow you to do some quick and simple edits inside the app. 
I'm going to start by straightening out this image by tapping onto this orientation tool and then swiping along the bottom until the image is level. I'll apply it and then I'll tap the crop tool. Then I'll just drag these corners until the green is gone and then I'll tap apply again and then finally done to finish my edits. If CloudSync is turned on, these changes will go right to my other connected devices. There are some limitations in using built-in editing tools and sometimes using a computer is faster and easier. Editing with CloudSync means that I can use my favorite photo editor to clean out my images and then have those changes come back to ChromaScan. Let's see how this works. I'll start by opening up my ChromaScan folder in iCloud Drive and then opening up this poorly cropped image using the Preview app. I can rotate it and crop the image very quickly and when I save the file, the changes go right back to ChromaScan. Now there are times where you might need a more powerful image editor, but you might not need something as expensive as Photoshop. If you use a Mac, there's a very good image editor that's very comparable to Photoshop and it costs less than $50. I'll open this image in Affinity Photo and start working on some cleanup. Now this photo has two immediate problems. First, there's this red cast throughout the image that you often see in photos that were taken in the 70s. The second problem is the paper that was used to print this image has this strange regularly occurring texture to it that you might not notice right away in a print, but you'll definitely notice when you scan it. Now solving the first problem, I can do very quickly by using an auto level command, which will rotate all the colors in the image around what it considers to be the true blacks and whites. This immediately gets rid of the red cast. Now getting rid of that regular dot pattern is gonna require the use of a very specific image manipulation algorithm. Now strangely, this feature doesn't exist in Photoshop, but it does in the much cheaper Affinity Photo using something called an FFT denoise filter. Now what this does is it analyzes the regular dot patterns and then samples it down so that I can make one edit and apply it to all the dots that have that pattern. I simply use this paintbrush to blot out the peak elements, and as I do, these dots instantly disappear. Now, never blot out the center dot, though. That's just going to screw up the image. Then, just like that, the dots are gone, and my image is still sharp. When I'm done, I simply save the image in place, and the updates automatically go right back to ChromaScan. You can delete individual images inside the ChromaScan app one by one in the gallery, but there's an even easier way to batch delete using CloudSync. There are two cases where this might be useful. First, you can use it as a faster way to get rid of a group of images. Then, after you've finished scanning and tagging images in the ChromaScan app and have moved them to their permanent location, you can use this approach to clear out images of both the cloud storage and the ChromaScan app. Let's see how it's done. Start by making sure the ChromaScan app is open and in the gallery as it is here. Then, open your ChromaScan images folder and select and delete the images you want to discard. As you do this, you should start seeing them disappear from the ChromaScan app. It's important to have the ChromaScan app running as you do this so that the app can remove the image records from our internal database. So that's all there is to it. Batch deleting images through CloudSync is fast and easy. The next thing we're gonna talk about is how to share these images after you've scanned them and made sure that the metadata is complete. Now, built into ChromaScan is this normal sharing service you see in a lot of applications. You can use this to send the images to email or text or other applications. It's easy to use, but there's one huge downside that we need to talk about. This whole panel is a system service that is controlled by the operating system. And the way it shares images is by recreating them. Now, when you do this, you're gonna get a copy of the original image and it doesn't contain the original metadata. Let's take a look at what happens when I drop it to myself. Here's the image and right away, I can tell that the image is named differently than the way ChromaScan normally names files. When I inspect the metadata, there really isn't any of the tags that I created into ChromaScan. So use this sharing service only in situations where you need to share just the image. If you want to store your images long-term in your photo organization software, the best way to get it is from the ChromaScan folder in either Dropbox or iCloud. If you don't use either of these services, you can still transfer the metadata-rich images from your phone using a USB cable and the iTunes method that I described earlier. So that's a general view on how to work with images after you've scanned them in ChromaScan and then how to move them to your own image libraries. In this section, we'll cover using ChromaScan's built-in import feature, which allows you to import untagged images through iCloud or Dropbox and then tag them using natural language tagging. ChromaScan import is a feature that is unlocked using a one-time in-app purchase. To start, make sure that you have either iCloud Drive or Dropbox turned on. The first time you try to activate the import feature, you may see this message telling you that the import folder is empty. 
Before activating the in-app purchase, we want to make sure that you have a connected iCloud or Dropbox import folder. So I'm going to go to my iCloud Drive folder, find Chromascan, and then find and open the import folder. From here, I'm just going to drop in an untagged image to get the ball rolling. The next time I go back to the import screen, I should see this screen that allows me to complete an in-app purchase or restore a previous purchase. Now, the import feature is a one-time purchase, so if you ever see this screen after you've purchased it, simply tap on the Restore Purchase link here, and then your purchase will be restored. Once you've purchased the product or restored it, you should see this image that you've just added in your import folder. The import screen is connected to the import folder you connected through iCloud Drive or Dropbox, so any images that you dropped in there, you should see here. There are a couple of other ways to get images into the import folder outside of using the cloud services. First, you can use this album icon to import images from your camera roll. Just grant access to your camera roll and then tap on each image you want to bring in and then tap on the Done button. This will bring a copy of each image from your camera roll into the import folder and then make it available for tagging. Another way to get images in is to use the built-in camera feature by tapping on this camera icon. Now this feature isn't designed to replace using the light box and there are some of the usual downsides of scanning this way, such as glare. But if you're out and about and you really want to get a scan of an image and tag it later, this is a great way to do it. By default, the camera looks for rectangular shapes against a static background. Now don't worry too much about trying to get it perfectly straight because we do some perspective correction on the final image. Just try to keep everything level and have the red box go completely over the image, just like this. Tap the capture button and you should see a preview that you can either keep or discard. Finally, the import feature supports app-to-app -app transfer. Now I have this image that I composited using an iOS application called Pixelmator. It has a sharing feature that allows me to send a copy of this image to Chromascan, which I can do by tapping on the sharing icon and then selecting the JPEG image. From there, I just slide over to the Chromascan logo, then tap on it, and that will open up Chromascan right to the import screen where I can tag it later. So speaking of tagging, let's get started tagging these images that we've just brought in. If you want to tag just one particular image, I would just tap on it and then go right to the tagging screen. However, in this case, I want to go back and tag multiple images in one shot. These images share the same date, location, and people. So I'm going to tap on Batch and then tap on each one to add them to this batch. When I'm ready to tag, I just tap onto this tag icon down here and this will take me right to the tagging screen. I can swipe left or right to view the batched images. When I'm ready to tag, the rest is just like tagging with scanned images. The voice control indicator gives you a status of the offline recognition engine. I can start the voice recognition engine either by tapping onto the voice control indicator or by saying the word chroma. Now I'm going to give a natural language description and the import feature will generate the metadata just the same way it does in scanning mode. So here's my metadata, but there is one difference in this interface compared to the scanning screen. We couldn't fit a map preview right in this view, but if you tap onto this map icon, it will take you right to the place where the image is going to be tagged to. Now, if the location looks good, you can just tap on this map icon again to dismiss it. However, if you want to fine tune the location, you can either use the search bar up at the top here to type in a new search to locate the map back to that spot, or you can pinch and zoom to a new spot. When you want to update the location, just tap and hold right onto that spot to drop a pin, and then tap on this label to geolocate it right to that spot. Now the rest of this metadata looks good, so I'm just going to tap on this green chevron to apply the metadata. Since I did a batch selection, I get one more warning to let me know that I'm going to apply this metadata to all of the images. When I'm done, I return back to the import screen. The batched images have now been moved to the main gallery, and I can continue selecting images and tagging. So let me do a couple more images just to give you a few more time-saving tips. From the images I have left, I can jump right into an image and then start tagging using natural language descriptions. So here, if my metadata is correct, I just tap on this green chevron and this image is then tagged. And then I see the very next image. If I swipe upwards from the metadata panel, I can see my custom names and my custom place presets, which I can use the same way that I do with the scanner view. I can use the clear people command to remove the names of the people in this metadata field. And this is particularly useful if I have images that have the same date and location, 
that can be reused, but the people are different. Then I can add people names to the metadata just by seeing them one by one in offline mode, just like in the scan view. So there it is, a way to import untagged images into ChromaScan and tag them using natural language tagging. Now this approach is great if you need to tag a few images at a time, but if you have hundreds of images to tag and you use a Macintosh computer, check out ChromaTag for Mac OS. It uses the same natural language tagging as ChromaScan, but it's much, much faster. So there it is. That's ChromaScan version 3 from top to bottom. It's a lot to digest for one iPhone app, but it's designed to help you do a lot in one shot. Now, if you ever get stuck or something doesn't quite work out right, where should you turn? We want you to get the very most out of ChromaScan, and we are here to help. If you go to this URL, you can fill out a small form and open a support ticket, and we'll get back to you quickly. We usually respond within a day, and we can handle most problems fairly quickly. I hope you really enjoy using ChromaScan to help you scan your photos and create the type of metadata that will be embedded in your photos that will help you tell your family story for generations to come. For now, happy scanning.